Boron. Boron availability. Boron is vital for every plant. It is still one of those essential elements that's required for the plant to go from seed to seed. And boron is either in the rocks that weathered down to make your topsoil or it wasn't. So in the case of boron, very often it's not the conditions that change the availability from the soil, but whether, it was, whether it's actually there in the first place or, or not. So we should know the fields that are low in boron or deficient in boron. It's particularly important in all the brassica crops, which includes all seed rape. Um, without adequate levels of boron, we get um, tissues uh, that, which are not cohesive, cohesively held together. It's part of the glue that holds the, cell to get, uh, the cells together in plants. So in something like sugar beet, uh, inadequate boron will lead to the crown opening up uh, and, and rainwater and uh, other materials getting into that split crown and causing crown rot. Boron is very important in any crop that we're feeding calcium to because when we put the calcium on it stops the boron being available. And we're starting to see responses to boron on soils where we haven't previously. Now whether this is down to uh, just as taking bigger and bigger yields from the field and the amount of available boron not being available at the right time or insufficient quantities, we don't know. But um, on calcareous soils we are definitely seeing responses to boron low levels of boron on in cereals, which was not, a, not something anybody expected to find, but we're now observing it more and more often. And um, in terms of the all seed rape crop, we don't use as much boron as the French do. Um, now in France, boron is one of the main soil deficiencies because a lot of the soils um, in France simply don't have any boron in it. But they put far more on than we do, probably twice as much, uh, as, um, up to 6 and 7 kilos a hectare of 21% uh, boron. The presentation to the plant of boron to correct boron deficiency is also interesting because um, there, is, there is a school of thought that says that the soluble borates, particularly sodium, disodium octoborate, is more agronomically effective than the liquid boron ethanolamine. And there's a certain amount of evidence that, that, that supports that point of view. Boron ethanolamine is a very handy liquid to use and there is also some uh, considerable evidence over the years that the ethanolamine part of that molecule has some beneficial growth regulatory effects in addition to the availability of the boron but not necessarily an instantly um, effective boron source. Boron, as we know, is adversely affected by calcium, high levels of calcium. And similarly, calcium is um, adversely affected by low levels of boron. Without boron, uh, we don't have a stronger plant. We don't have as physically tough a plant. We have a plant more prone to uh, wilting. and there is a quite a, a lot of indications that boron also helps the plant to resist pests and disease. Another important point about boron is that it has an interrelationship with molybdenum. Uh, molybdenum itself is vital for efficient nitrogen metabolism and to make nitrogen uh, available throughout the, throughout the plant. So when we put boron on a plant, we often include a small amount of molybdenum because of the way they, they work together synergistically and complement one another. Uh, it's an interesting uh, material is boron because it's really not required at very high levels but crops do respond to it rather well. The one crop which really doesn't like a lot of boron is potatoes. Um, if you're trying to control volunteer potatoes in a sugar beet crop it's a lot easier if you've given the sugar beet a good dose of foliar boron before you try putting the herbicide on to control the, the volunteer potatoes. So that's boron.